We'll ask you to take your Bibles and let's turn to the book of Judges, chapter number 6. book of Judges, chapter number 6. Now we're going to pick up where we left off last week. We began last week to see how the Lord raised up Gideon to deliver the children of Israel from yet another oppression brought on by their sin. We saw the same cycle begin. We saw Israel's sin. We saw their suffering. We saw their supplication. All in just the first six verses of chapter 6. We, then we began to look at, at uh, Israel's salvation and who the Lord was using to deliver them was a man named Gideon. And where we're seeing how the Lord raised up and called Gideon to lead his people in battle against the Midianites. And uh, of course, he, when you take a look at Gideon and you look at him from a human standpoint, you so well, it doesn't seem like uh, it seemed like you maybe you could find somebody better than that, because Gideon was kind of hiding whenever uh, he was found of the Lord. He was hiding uh, his wheat threshing activity from the Midianites. We saw that in spite of his hiding and in spite of his doubts about himself, the Lord was with him and called him to deliver Israel. And we saw that at at first Gideon's faith was weak, and we're going to see tonight it continues to be weak. <laughs> Uh, he, he continues to, to ask the Lord for some signs. Um, but Gideon's weak faith is, uh, is a growing faith. And he's mentioned in the hall of faith. So let's not give him too hard a time. Because he, he grew in his faith. We saw Gideon's first assignment from the Lord last week. He instructed Gideon to tear down the altar of Baal that his father had, cut down the grove beside it, and build an altar to the Lord God and to sacrifice his father's seven-year-old bull using the wood that he got from cutting down the growth. So I mean, that's a pretty tall task to ask him to do for the first, first thing, but uh, Gideon obeyed the Lord, and, but he did so at night. <laughs> he, he hid from his dad, he hid from the people of the town that he, uh, where he lived, and uh, we saw the uproar by the men of the city for what had been done by Gideon. And then as we were leaving last week, we saw that Gideon's father came to his defense and changed his name and to a, a word that means to let Baal plead. In other words, uh, if Baal has a problem with it, his dad said, let, let Baal defend himself. Let Baal plead against him. And uh, before we move on from uh, that part of uh, Gideon's life, I, I want us to uh, note three things. First of all, uh, understand that the spiritual must come before the physical. The spiritual must come before the physical. Matthew 6, 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Uh, again, Israel's greatest problem was a spiritual problem. And though their primary concern was their suffering, the Lord's primary concern was their sin of idolatry. And that's why he had... Uh, Gideon addressed that to begin with. It wasn't do no good to deliver them from uh, uh, the Midianites if they didn't get rid of their sin. And so he had him destroy the, the Baal, uh, the image of Baal and, and the groves. Uh, they wanted help, but sadly, they didn't want holiness. They wanted revenge against the Midianites, but they didn't want righteousness. They wanted victory, but they didn't want the virtue that comes uh, before the victory in their life. Now, but the Lord does, does not deliver the people in their sins. He delivers them from their sins. And so even today we find uh, that people want the Lord to solve their earthly problems, but they don't want to deal with their spiritual problems first. I get calls from them all the time. You know, their earthly problems, they don't have money to pay rent. They don't have money for food. Their cars broke down. They've run out of gas. I could go on and on with all the things that are going on in their life. Those things are symptoms of their primary problem. Their primary problem is they need, they need the Lord. <clears throat> are they in church? No. Uh, do they come to church to, to ask help of the church? No, they, 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 wanna, they don't want anybody, anybody really to know about it. They just kind of like to come through me and get it done. That's where we're at in the society in which we live. The priority of our lives should be spiritual matters first and earthly concerns second. And so the spiritual must come before the physical. 
The second thing is the private must come before the public. The private must come before the public. Before Gideon could take uh, the war to the country, <laughs> he had to fight the war at home. Amen? Uh, before he could reform a nation, he first had to reform his family. And so revival of a nation comes uh, from, first of all, us having personal revival first, then to our families, then to the church, and then to the nation. So private must come before the public. And then the small must come before the great. Before Gideon could be trusted to lead an army, he had to prove himself in his household and hometown. And he did that. Luke 16, verse 10 says, He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. So the Lord's building his faith a little step at a time here. But tonight we see, and we're going to begin here in Judges chapter number 6 and verse number 33, we see Gideon and the people of Israel gathered to fight the Midianites. In fact, in verse 33, we see that the Midianite army, along with the Amalekites and some others from the east, were ready to move against Israel again. Let's read verse 33. Then all the Midianites and the Amalekites and the children of the east were gathered together and went over and pitched in the valley of Jezreel. Uh, there was a great host of men and equipment uh, in chapter 7 and verse 12. It talks about the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east that lay along the valley like grasshoppers for multitude, and the camels were without number uh, as the sand by the seaside for multitude. In other words, when you looked out there, you said, oh boy, we're we going to have a tough time here because you couldn't tell how many were there. Now, we do know how many were there. Uh, there in chapter 8 and verse number 10, we find, find later that there were 15,000 men that were left over after the, the, the larger part of them killed one another. We're going to see that in our story here. But if you got 15,000 plus 120,000 uh, that, uh, that fell dead, and so that makes 135,000 fighting men. When you got uh, uh, the, the army that uh, Gideon had, 135,000 seemed like a... Uh, a large group, right? Uh, under the Spirit of the Lord uh, direction, Gideon gathered an army. Look at verse back in chapter 6, verse number 34 and verse 35. But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, and he blew a trumpet, and Abi Ezer was gathered after him. Now that's the folks in his in his family. He was out of the family of, of Abi Ezer. His dad was from the Abi Ezer family. So this is basically he was gathering the, the hometown the, and, the, um, and his family. And it says in verse 35, And he sent messengers throughout all Manasseh, who also was gathered after him. And he sent messengers unto Asher, and unto Zebulun, and unto Naphtali, and they came up to meet them. And so we see um, the, 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 he's under the Spirit of the Lord's direction, and he gathers his army. Then we see another weak display of faith from Gideon. Look at verse 36. And Gideon said unto God, and catch this question, okay? If thou wilt save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said, see the problem there? God, if you're going to do what you said you're going to do, <laughs> you know, you're questioning God and whether, he's, whether God is going to do his word. He says, Behold, I will put a fleece of wool in the floor, and if the dew be on the fleece only, and it be dry upon all the earth beside, then shall I know that thou wilt save Israel by mine hand, as thou hast said. You'll do him. You know, then I'll know that you're going to do what you said you were going to do. Um, look at verse 38. And it was so, for he rose up early on the morrow, thrust the fleece together, and wring the dew out of the fleece, a, a bowl full of water. And Gideon said unto God, Let not thine anger be hot against me, and I will speak but this once. Let me prove, I pray thee, but this, but this once with the, the fleece, let it now be dry only upon the fleece, and upon all the ground let there be dew. 
So the Lord humored him here in verse 40. And God did so that night, for it was dry from the fleece on him, and there was dew all around. As I said, um, a weak display of faith, but he's growing in his faith. All right? Um, we see Israel's army uh, gathered to oppose Midian in verse number 1 and 2 of chapter 7. Then Jerubbaal, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod. And Herod means trembling, the well of trembling. So that the hosts of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Moreh in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. Now he's got 32,000. 32,000 is 4 to 1 odds against him. Okay, 135,000 he's going against with 32,000. He says... <clears throat> Uh, understand that uh, that may seem like a big army, but this army was uh, untried and untrained and ill-equipped. Talking about Gideon's army. He got 32,000 and they weren't really soldiers. Consider Gideon's reaction to the people following him. He might have been overwhelmed that the people listened and that the Lord had chosen him to begin with, but he also might have looked on the 32,000 as not being enough to do the task. And there ain't no way we're going to get this done. But the Lord's analysis of these 32,000 was that there were too many for him to bless. 32,000 to 135,000, that's 4.22 to 1. So the Lord's reason was Israel's pride. The Lord said, uh, I, can't, I can't let that many go into the battle. Uh, or Israel will say, you know, boy, we got the victory, didn't we? It, it was us. And so he was concerned about pride, and we know that man's pride uh, and the Lord's ways don't work together, do they? 1 Corinthians 1, verse 27 through 31, uh, But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and, the, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are that no flesh should glory in His presence, but of Him are ye and Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, He that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. And so the, the Lord was making sure that He was going to get the glory out of what happened here. And we see Gideon and the people were prepared by the Lord. The Lord had to thin down the ranks here. We see in verse number 3 what the Lord tells him to, to do. The first test was given here and we're going to see 22,000 were eliminated. Uh, look at verse 3. And now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And they returned of the people 20 and 2,000, and there remained 10,000. Wow. Uh, so those who were fearful and afraid were those who didn't believe they could win. And uh, they didn't understand the greatness of the Lord being on their side. Uh, you know, the, the Lord is a majority all by Himself. Doesn't really need any anybody. He could have gained the victory without any. And we consider... Uh, such scriptures as Exodus 14, 13, when all of Israel had their backs against the Red Sea, remember? And Egypt was advancing on them. The Egypt Egyptian army was in pursuit. And Moses said to the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall not see them again no more forever. They didn't have to lift a finger. All they had to do was walk through on dry ground. The Lord parted the waters. They walked through on dry ground. On the other side, you know, they got a little antsy because they saw that the, the Egyptians were coming in there. And then the Lord brought the, the water down upon the Egyptians, and they were killed. Later in Israel's future, 
later even than this, uh, the Lord through the prophet Isaiah had to remind them again. In Isaiah 41 verse 10, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. The Lord wants to be our power. He wants to be our victory. Now, after this first calling of Gideon's army, he had 10,000 left. That's 13.5 to 1 odds. Um, Look at uh, verse number 4. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down into the water, and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, This shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee, and of whomsoever I, I say unto thee, This shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. And so uh, none of these were afraid. They were willing to go. But these were tested by drinking water. And those, well, we see those who fell to their knees, look at the verse number 5. <clears throat> so he brought them down to the, brought down the people to, unto the water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue as a dog lappeth, him shalt thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that boweth down upon his knees to drink. And the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were 300 men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. <clears throat> and the Lord said unto Gideon, By the 300 men that lapped will I save you, and deliver the Midianites unto, into thine hand. And let all the other people go, every man unto his place. So uh, they were tested by drinking water. Those who fell on their knees would... Uh, the, the picture there is you're taking the eye off the enemy. When you, you're down on your knees, lapping the water, um, you're taking your eye off the enemy. Those who lapped water out of their hand were full, fully alert to what was going on around them. So Gideon had 300 men left. 300 men is 450 to one odds. 451 odds. Consider the decrease there. But consider the caliber of the soldiers also. The Lord would save Israel by the 300, according to verse number 7. And the Lord uses men of his own choosing. Everybody else was sent home. Look at verse number 8. Verse 8 uh, it says, So the people took victuals uh, in their hand and their trumpets, and he sent all the rest of Israel, every man, into his tent, and retained those 300 men, and the host of Midian was beneath him in the valley. And so uh, we see uh, the 300. And I'm sure Gideon was like, uh, boy, you know, I, I really need some assurance here of what's going on. And he got assurance from the Lord. Gideon was assured in verses 9 through 15. In fact, the Lord told him, look, look in verse number 9. It came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Arise. Get thee down unto the host, for I have delivered it unto, into thine hand. The Lord is assuring him of victory here. But verse 10, he says, But if thou fear to go down, and quite obviously he does fear to go down, because he does what the Lord <laughs> tells him. If he's feared to go down to do this, if thou fear to go down, go thou with Phura, thy servant, down to the host, and thou shalt hear what they say. And afterward shall thine hands be strengthened. In other words, you'll get assurance. You'll, you'll feel better. <laughs> shall, thy hands shall be strengthened to go down into the host. Then went he down with Furah, his uh, servant, unto the outside of, uh, of the armed men that were in the host. And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along the valley like grasshoppers for multitude. And their camels were without number, as the sand by the sea side for multitude. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow. So they're just standing there listening. And this guy's telling his dream to one of the fellows standing beside him. And he said, Because I, I dreamed a dream. He said, Behold, I dreamed a dream. And, and lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian. 
and came unto a tent and smote it that it fell and overturned it, that the tent lay alone. And his fellow answered and said, This is nothing save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel, for into his hand hath God delivered Midian and all the host. So uh, these guys were defeated before uh, the first shots were fired. <laughs> Didn't have shots, but anyway. They were, de they were defeated already. And so yeah. we see in verse 15, it was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof that he worshipped <laughs> and returned to the host of Israel and said, Arise. For the Lord hath delivered into your hand the host of Midian. Now, had Gideon not gone down, would the Lord have delivered him? He would have. But he wouldn't have had much assurance, would he? But he had a lot more assurance here at the end. And uh, Gideon and the 300 went to war. We see their strategy. Look at verse 16 to 17 uh, and 18 here. Seeing see their strategy, and he divided the 300 men into three companies. So he got three companies here. And he put a trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers and lamps within the pitchers. And he said unto them, Look on me, and do likewise. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I do, so shall ye do. And when I blow with a trumpet, and all that are with me, blow, that with me, then blow ye the trumpets uh, on every side of all the camp. So you got three, they're not four sides, three sides. They're in a triangle, okay? Three sides, hundred. I'm, I'm, I'm just guessing a hundred in each company. You, you, normally the companies are, are even. You got three hundred, and divide in three companies, you got a hundred per company. Then he said there. And say the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Now, that's where y'all get the uh, the Gideon's ministry, the name from, right there. Am I right? The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Uh, the sword of the Lord is God's word in it. It's God's word. And so the the Gideons are uh, they are involved in the in the uh, distribution of, of scriptures, and they use that uh, uh, that verse right there. Praise the Lord. Um, but we see they, they worked this strategy also. Um, they, they did what they were supposed to do. So, so uh, Gideon and the hundred uh, men that were with him came into the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle of the watch, and they had uh, but newly set the watch. And they blew the trumpets and break the pitchers that were in their hands, and the three companies blew the trumpets and break the pitchers and held the lamps in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands to blow withal, and they cried the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Um, and they stood every man in his place round about the camp, and all the hosts ran and cried and fled. And so uh, uh, it says there, and the three hundred blew the trumpets, and the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow, even throughout all the host. And the host fled to Beth Shittah in Zerath, and the border of that big place right there. Okay, I'm not even going to attempt the Abel Mahola and to Taba. And the, uh, the men of Israel gathered themselves together out of Naphtali, and out of Asher, and out of all Manasseh, and pursued after the Midianites. And Gideon sent messengers throughout all Mount Ephraim, saying, Come down against the Midianites and take before them the waters unto Beth Bara and Jordan. And all the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together, took the waters unto Beth Bara and Jordan, and they took two princes of the Midianites, Oreb and Zeb, and they slew Oreb on the rock of Oreb, upon the rock of Oreb, and Zeb they slew at the wine press of Zeb. And pursued Midian and, and brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon on the other side, Jordan. So we see uh, their strategy. They work this strategy. Every man stood his place. After blowing the, the trumpets and horns in their pitchers, they let the Lord do what the Lord said he was going to do. And the Lord turned uh, them against each other. The Lord set every man's sword against his fellow to accomplish the victory 
for Israel. Praise the Lord. Now, that's our Bible study for this evening. It's not the end of the story on Gideon, though. But we've got still chapter number 8. Now, that was the part of the story most of us have heard. Amen. And we're going to take a look at... Uh, uh, they're still chasing some folks. Uh, and they're going to run into some problems. Um, Lord willing, we'll come back and look at chapter 8, where we see a few a few problems that Gideon encountered in his pursuit of the kings of Midian. One of the problems came by way of the brethren, the brethren, the Ephraimites, and we'll see. Other problems came from men in Sukkoth and Penuel who refused to give him and his army bread in their pursuit. And we're going to see some other things and uh, wrap up the story of Gideon, Lord willing, next week. But that's our Bible study for this evening. Let's set that aside, pull back out our prayer list, we'll pray for the needs, and we'll be dismissed with this prayer.